Welcome to the Creating an Empowered Body, Mind and Life podcast with your host, author, fitness entrepreneur, empowerment and transformation coach, Chris L.R.B. Hemmings. This podcast is about helping people find happiness through health, fitness and mindset. So welcome back guys, we've got another podcast and today we've got Stephen Hall all the way from the south of England. Um, He's got an awesome podcast with some very big names in the fitness industry and he's given some really, really cool information out to the, what would we call it, the fitness um, fanatic, bodybuilder, fitness um, competitor type of um, people that are interested in that. He's got a website called Revive Stronger. Um, is it revivestronger.com? Yeah, yeah revivestronger.com. Gives lots of ev- uh, evidence-based information. Um, we've got the same mentality around giving the good information out rather than the myths and misconceptions of the industry, so to speak. Um, he's a natural powerlifter, a natural bodybuilder, similar to myself, and he's a very good one, I must say. Uh, he's in great shape. And we shared the stage together in 2014 and we both took a trophy home. So the reason I wanted to ask you to come on today, Stephen, is I've followed you for a long time and you've got a really good um, social media content. You've give out loads of awesome information, as I've already said. But you've had a really, really interesting journey, which you told me about backstage in 2014, which really um, sparked my interest into how your psyche and mentality of life is and what we wanted to kind of focus this podcast on is is self-belief so i'd love you to kind of introduce yourself a little bit to the guys listening that don't know you i know a lot of people do know you that um that follow our our, our journeys but if you can introduce yourself to the, to the one or two people that don't then um we can uh, we can go from there Awesome. Well, thank you for the kind introduction, and I'm glad you uh, scathed over the fact that you uh, beat me in that show. And <laughs> took the third spot and got the kind of the nice final photos and the trophy, whereas I uh, took fourth place, which uh, I was actually incredibly happy with as well. Yeah. My first show and things, and likewise, you're a terrific bodybuilder, and the content you guys are putting out is fantastic and really helping to kind of dispel the myths and put out the big major principles. Mm. A large part of what I do as well, which yep. you know. Uh, so, I mean, about myself, I guess, I've only been in the industry maybe, uh, 2014 was really when I was starting to build and get into the industry, and I was uh, a one-on-one PT with a bit of online coaching on the side, and then eventually kind of moved towards hybrid, moved away from the one-on-one, uh, on, and then moved towards the online side so that I could actually transition and move out into London with my girlfriend. Uh, because when you're online, I mean, location is not a problem. So that was really fantastic. Uh, so I've been doing with Revive Stronger online coaching for like the last two years. Recently brought on a coach, which I t- just told you. And yeah, we work with mainly bodybuilders, powerlifters, or m- a lot of our clients are just people who are interested in both those sports. Uh, so they're more general population who have yeah. kind of nine to five jobs, but they, they love the sports, they love the concepts, they want to grow big muscles, get strong, get lean. Uh, so those are the people that we help. And then, yeah, I've got the, the blog, RevivestRonger.com. Try and put out lots of valuable content on there. YouTube channel with the podcast, Macros Bodybuilding and Powerlifting, which I am very happy to have been able to just reach so many smart people and share hmm. their message with the world, which is fantastic. So we'll and, put all these links in the, in the bottom afterwards. It was you know, There's so many things there you've said. People are like, whoa, what, what are they all? They'll all be in the bottom. Don't worry. Yeah, if you go to RevivestRonger.com, you'll be able to find everything right. there. It should be quite easy to access. And um, yeah, myself, natural bodybuilder with, I mean, I never, I, I'm so lucky to have been able to even compete for many reasons, as we'll probably get into. Um, competed once in powerlifting. I'm not a particularly great powerlifter. Uh, I have a shoulder injury, which I'm going to say just holds back my pressing far too much for my bench <laughs> press to ever be anything good. My squat and deadlift aren't bad. Um, but uh, yeah, then that's basically me. I love pizza. I love coffee. Dieting right now for the same show as what you'll be doing, uh, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so the the uh, it would not give it justice if I tried to explain the, the story and the, the mindset behind your 
like self belief that you've got. So I'd love to be able to hear a little bit about you. You had an accident, and I know it's something you don't like to talk about that much, um, and kind of use it as part of your um, what you talk about. But for me, it was it's it, it's very powerful um, in terms of coming from the accident to coming to actually being a, a, a natural bodybuilder. And I think many people listening will be able to relate with the the mindset or at least take some inspiration from what you've done and actually see that their lives you know might not be so bad where they've got something that's an element or something that's not so good uh in their, their their physique or their body or whatever and kind of just relax a bit and get on and get to their goals no matter what so maybe you can tell us a little bit about what it is if you don't mind yeah, yeah, sure. Um, and it's just so people know, it's not like I'm, I'm not sensitive about it. I'm very open about it. I'll okay. share every single detail that could be there. I just didn't want to use it as kind of like a crutch as some people you, I, I find people try and sell themselves on kind of having survived this or done this. And it's kind of like, <laughs> well, I don't know, there's got to be more to it. And um, so I don't like to just sell myself on that. I like to sell myself and be able to actually help people with good content and yeah. things like that. So Anyway, I'll get, get into it, and it essentially all began at uni. Um, I was always into fitness and health, and I went to the gym. I did a lot of running, and it was actually on one of my normal runs that I do uh, out on the road in which I was on for an all-time best, um, coming back on the back leg and really actually very close to my flat. Like I must have been five minutes away, if that. Um, came to a traffic light and it was flashing amber or at least from my memory it was flashing amber um, just legged it across didn't look then I looked to my right and I got hit by a van um, and that initially led to two days in hospital I had some scarring I had a fractured skull they released me uh, which they probably shouldn't have done uh, because I was back in hospital about a day later because I was vomiting um, kind of violently vomiting and oh it was I mean I, I can't really remember it too well, but I was taken to A&E and then I was in hospital for a month after that. Um, what had happened is my hypothalamus had been damaged, which is basically, for those that don't know, and I don't know a lot about it, it's like the control center for all your hormones and things like that. And that caused me to have something in which my sodium levels were kind of critically low. And when that happens, you can basically fall into a seizure at any point. So I couldn't be released until they'd monitored and it was in a safe zone for me to be released because, I mean, if I had a seizure out on the street, it just, that could have been me gone. So um, in that time, I also felt like, and Chris, you'll be able to relate to this because I often talk about how the time in hospital, the kind of brain fog, the low energy, the kind of no will to live was a bit like deep stages in contest prep <laughs> in a really sick, horrible way. Um, when you're fighting, I mean, you're going into those low body fat zones in which you have kind of, you're taking your body to a place it doesn't want to go. You're going near yeah. death because you're getting to essential levels of body fat. So the body is not in a good way. And that's exactly how I felt in hospital. Um, so like there were days that would pass where I, I remember I couldn't even watch like proper TV. I was watching Pokemon. Like that's all I could concentrate on. I couldn't even play the game Pokemon on my Game Boy. I can remember that. Um, but this will tell you a bit about how, what sort of mentality I already had in that that was in the Easter holidays and I had exams coming up. So I was, I asked my mum to bring my revision into hospital because I wanted to try and revise while I was in that hospital bed. I couldn't, I just, I couldn't, um, I lost kind of any pleasure from food. I couldn't taste food. Like people brought me in Easter eggs and things like that. Chocolate, didn't eat any of it. I lost two stone while I was in hospital oh, um, and I lost any muscle mass I had. Because when you don't move, you don't eat, you just completely just catabolize anything. Uh, so when I was eventually released, the only problem that was identified that had to be kept under control was low sodium. So I had to be put on diuretics and I was on a water restriction, which was 250 mils a day, oh, um, including food, obviously. But I couldn't have things like soup, couldn't have milk on cereal unless I wanted to count that within the limit. I couldn't have like watermelon and things like that. Crazy. Very ill. Yeah, it was, the thing is, I didn't feel thirsty. I mean, I missed drinking because it was like a habit, but I never felt thirsty. I was kind of like a camel. I just store it all. <laughs> um, so eventually, kind of that process of about a year or so, I recovered my normal kind of sodium levels and I got off the diuretic, which is fantastic. That actual year or so, 
was kind of horrific and it's kind of a time in my life that I'm glad is passed by and I can't remember a lot of it. It was just very hard. I didn't have any social life. I couldn't go out and enjoy things. Um, so what I found to help me was the gym and kind of I did a traditional folk, fat folk that you might have heard like Alan Aragon quote <laughs> and I just ate all the food, all the clean food and I just smashed like 4,000 calories, tons of protein um, and that was my life was like that extreme orthorexic kind of lifestyle um, because that's what I had control over. I had control over my body in that sense. Mm. So I actually built up a fair bit of muscle in that time, but obviously got quite fat. I then did like a keto diet and things like this to try and rinse it off. Um, got in okay shape, better shape than what I was when I went in hospital eventually. So can we put, um, some, can we put some time on this? Like when? But how so long ago? Was, it probably took me... A year, that was probably a year in which I went from, I went in hospital at about 11 stone, mm. a month later came out at just over 9 stone, and then I mo I went straight back up to 11 stone in like, I think it was about a year, um, really quick. Like and how long, how long ago was pounds. it? Um, that from was from now? Second year uni, six years. Six years. Yeah, six years ago. So quite a while ago now. Um and then once I had recovered and got to, I was like in this, now we're in this like fat state in which I have recovered my sodium levels, but I was kind of really quite depressed, not very kind of happy, didn't have a libido or anything. And I'd also developed moves. So I, had, okay. I, I found lumps under my nipples and I was really concerned. I thought it might be oh cancer. Dear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got them checked out. And it was actually gynecomastia right. because they then tested my testosterone levels and they were at like ground zero. Um, and no wonder I had like no libido and no like love for life. And I just kind of was really depressed. So that's when I took on testosterone replacement therapy for which I had gel that I rubbed onto my nipples um, to get rid, Crazy. Of, yeah. rid of the gynecomastia, which worked. It oh, also right. brought kind of just my whole life back into great shape i was able to grow a beard again i could grow like chest hair i was feeling fantastic as you like anyone who's i don't think anyone could experience it unless they've had low testosterone and then come mm. out of it but you just you I, I guess it might be like someone take like for us now taking steroids like that sort of change you probably right. feel a lot more energetic or like after sh after a show when you're a bodybuilder the next day yeah. the next the next week you're like <gasps> full of life, full of life. Yeah. <laughs> so I was on testosterone replacement therapy for a month um, and then I actually at this point had kind of found people like Alan Aragon, Lyle McDonald, kind of smart myself up and then that really coincided well with going on testosterone replacement therapy because my results kind of shifted a lot faster. Okay, yeah. Um, and then I basically was like, I want to compete naturally. I, I like, had a passion for it then because I'd found 3DMJ and people like that. So I knew I needed to get off the TRT, so kind of requested the doctor, can I come off? He didn't think I'd be able to sustain kind of healthy levels coming off, but I can. And yeah, I kind of ever since then have been competed um, shortly after and then kind of have been growing ever so, since, so healthy do you, ever since. Do you have your testosterone levels checked and stuff like that now? Are you still low? Um, the last time I had them checked, which was years ago, I was on the low but okay range. So the range is huge, um, yeah. and I was just on the lower end. So I wasn't concerned. As long as I'm healthy and I feel fine, I don't bother getting it checked. Good, good. That's good. So what we what we get here is like almost because what you've done in the last six years is absolutely phenomenal. Is like from from great pain or from a great pain in life comes great power often. So people end up being um, like very driven in life, and this is interesting to to hear and and you know can we to get to hear the story out loud it's like whoa and then you became a bodybuilder you didn't just become normal in life so to speak you became an extreme athlete um and obviously to come from like a depressive state to then across using fitness to not become in a depressive state i was wondering like how much um do you think that the the fitness involved keeping you happy um the lifting the gym and then obviously moving on to the bodybuilding but not more not so not so much about the bodybuilding more about the actual just going to the gym how did that make you feel happier so it was huge and i largely put the lifestyle the healthy lifestyle that bodybuilding generally is to have helped me sustain healthy kind of testosterone levels because mm. like i'm eating well and i'm kind of 
hitting the weights and that is only going to help my testosterone levels. So I very much attribute my health to that lifestyle, which mm. is fantastic for me. Um, for me, the main thing it gave me was an outlet that I felt control over. I absolutely love the fact that, I mean, just the remarkable fact that my body came from like critical state to healthy mm. was remarkable to me that it can heal itself like that. The fact that then bodybuilding is really cool because you can transform your body by your nutrition and your training like an artist, mm. that to me is just incredible. So the the lifestyle, I couldn't not do it now. I don't I think it's given me purpose in yeah. life and without it I just I, I literally people who don't do exercise and don't care for what they put in their mouth, I kind of I, it baffles me to some extent because it's almost what gives me a, like a reason each day kind of yeah. right i know i need to have like a good I just good nutrition it, you feel yeah. you feel good afterwards it's, it's like um the the endorphins that get released once you finish training and when you've had a really good session and then if you start getting a bit more advanced and you start like tracking your training and you're getting better at training and then if your goal is weight loss and all of a sudden you're starting to lose weight and feel better and because you're doing movements like, let's say, for example, a deadlift, you're standing more upright and proper. So people that are in the office are sat crunched over and they get sore shoulders and then they feel better. And all this cut stuff comes with fitness. And people kind of don't really realize that that is available by doing fitness because it sounds like it's obsessive and it sounds like, what, go to gym? You know, it's, it's like that. Um, something we spoke about just offline before was something that is on, on the tip of my tongue is bodybuilding for me is just something i do on this 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 decade that i'm in at the moment of my life where every three years ago or so i'll just go and compete because that's what i do and it's probably quite unhealthy to take your bodies to that to take your body to that level of body fat it's it's extreme it's not good for the body for that like three months or so when you're in the lower level as a body fat but then that far outweighs the three years between shows where you're eating healthy, you're training every day, you've got like a good, you know, cardiovascular system and you're looking after your nutrition and, and all that kind of outweighs it. And that's one of the reasons why I do it is it just gives me the, the drive for life. But then if someone takes that who doesn't compete and they just go and they take all of that stuff and then you just feel good all the time is why it's really important to, to lift. So that story, how 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 is that like giving you self-belief to be able to actually do what you've done because if we talk about goals or we talk about like goal setting, obviously you had a vision to become a bodybuilder, but you weren't at that stage yet. What was the, how did the adversity drive you to become a bodybuilder? Because it's a very big thing to do, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. And I guess maybe I was, I mean, my parents didn't want me to do it. Um, uh, my friends, I mean, they didn't take a lot of interest in it. They didn't really understand what was involved, but I knew it was extreme and it was almost in a, in a really kind of sick way in my head. It was, if I can get down to low body fat percentages and actually compete and look okay on stage and come out of it fine, I'm fully recovered from that accident. Mm. That accident is no longer kind of any part of my body and I'm fully fine from it. And the fact that I managed to do it and, and now can say I can do it again proves to me that kind of like almost now I have so much self-belief from having recovered from that accident, done bodybuilding and being able to transform in that way. Like I almost feel, I mean, in some ways unstoppable in that sense, <laughs> I like but, that. but it's I'm, obviously I'm not unstoppable, but just anyone, all of my clients and kind of myself, when you go through periods of where you control your nutrition, you really take care of yourself and you see good results for your body and you get that control you feel so much more confident about life because you don't feel kind of insecure about what you're eating what you're doing day to day you kind of feel empowered that okay yeah i'm putting this into my body i know it's going to do this because you've had that control and i think having an element of control of your nutrition and training yes it can get obsessive but just a small amount can go a very very long yeah, way yeah. Oh, small changes i like the way i like the way you used the word empowered there yeah, I didn't even mean to name drop. But. <laughs> it worked. Um, so then, obviously, like a lot of the stuff I talk about on this podcast is how fitness has kept you happy. So, like, is there something outside of that, like something on a daily basis, or something that you can kind of maybe help some of the listeners feel that if they start lifting, for example, or if they 
actually start enjoying the, the gym or like what is it that keeps you happy on a daily basis from from fitness so i think obviously in in large part it's my it's my job so yeah. i need to have that kind of that presence in the gym and learning every day progressing and i mean i've touched on a point there the progression is feels great i mean you might have a shitty day at work or a shitty week at work shitty month at work or relationships might be not be going well. But if you can go to the gym and progress on a lift, like that is some element of progression um, that's just, you can't really beat it. It's just something nice to know that you're doing something to improve yourself every time you go to the gym. Yeah. And yeah. That element just can't, you can't beat that feeling. I mean, when I, when I first started lifting, I think I was properly started lifting. I think I was about 19, um, 33 now. So when I started lifting, I was, uh, at the time I was, I had a business and I had quite a few staff working for me and it was very stressful and the gym happened to be over the road. So for me, it was almost like a sanctuary. So I was kind of, um, I'd take an hour and a half every day and I'd like go over and I wouldn't go on my phone and I'd just spend an hour and a half in the gym. And by the time, like if you're putting some weight on your shoulders and you're going to do a squat or you're going to do some sort of movement that's quite difficult, you can't think of anything else. And it's almost like a form of like meditation. It's like, yeah. it's like you can't think of anything other than like looking after your, your, your body while you're doing that exercise and getting it right. And obviously what you just said then, it's you're, fi- you, 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 you're doing something good for yourself. Like you, you're making yourself better. And that's what I did um, when I first started was that. Um, so that's, that's quite, that's quite interesting. Um, so you coach a lot of people, um, and you're very successful in, in that area. I see a lot of the stuff on social media. What, if you were going to coach a client, how can you, we're talking about self-belief here and confidence and things like that. How can you, or how would you give self-belief to a client? So for example, on a coaching call, if you were chatting to them, how would you give them self-belief? Or how would you help them understand that they can believe in themselves? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a really important thing to do is, I I mean, it's surprising how many people I have actually that do have lack self-belief. Because I think at this, in this age of the internet and you've got all these people on Instagram, especially you you look on there and you you see a crazy transformation. You see people with fantastic physiques. And these are like the people at the end of the bell curve. Is people, most people are here who are just people on Instagram who don't really post that much about their physique. Then you've got lots of people on Instagram here and then like no one down here who has poor results posts on Instagram. So you don't see this bit, you see a lot of this. And so they feel really down and disheartened that they're not getting the results that they kind of see online. So you mean like the genetic elite is what you're talking about, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Like Steve Cook or someone like that who just has like perfect symmetry and like is shredded year round. And obviously they haven't seen the processes that they've gone through to get to that stage. And they also, and a lot of the time I have to be like, right, you have to focus on yourself, look at where you've come from, what success you've had. And every time you're kind of doing something that's productive, you're hitting your macros, getting your training session in, that's a tick in the box in the right direction. And like, I like this quote from Jeff Alberts where he talks about like depositing pennies. And he's someone who's great to look at because he's like, you might quote, think he's like a genetic elite or whatever, but he's what, been in the gym 30, 30 years. years. Yeah, I've followed and him for a long time. Exactly. So it's kind of like you put, give them examples, give them situations in which you look back at their progress, where they've come to, where they've come from, mm. get them to really give themselves context and their own life context because there's people on YouTube who get paid to almost work out because they just get their film they film their workouts, they film their nutrition, and that's their job. Yeah. They have to be on point. They get paid to do that. Yeah. You don't get paid to do that. You've got a stressful life. You can only train so many times per week. You can only be so good with your nutrition. Um, so you can't expect the world. Um, so it's just being, I think it's important to be really realistic um, and give yourself context in your situation and what you should expect of yourself. Um, because otherwise, you, if you expect the world, and you're never going to get the world. Yeah, I mean, um, I, well, I talk about it in the Empowered by Eating System, this distorted perception of how we're supposed to look as a human. Like, it's just, it's so different how people think we should look compared to how we actually look because there's so many people on Instagram that are genetic elites, not just genetic elites, but they've some people have had Photoshop done. There's a lot of steroid abuse going on. So 
the image of how we're supposed to look is completely different because of the internet and because of social media and because of magazines compared to how people actually look and people are trying to achieve that i did it when i was 20 i was trying to achieve the 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 the, the big bodybuilder look and realized it after several years that that's not achievable because one they're taking steroids two they might be doing something else i mean i've got i'm a natural bodybuilder so is you i've got nothing against that but that's not what i want to do and not my journey so it's like you know it's the it's what you just said there is realistic expectations as well and we also go through that for the weight loss part of empowered by eating where we talk about what's realistic actually to lose weight and keep it off and then we talk about the one percent thing you know where we try to get people to like look at you losing one percent maximum per week and if they get half a percent great because they're on the way down but these diets and the fad diets make them think that they can lose 10 pound in a week and it's just not sustainable and all stuff like that, um, which is cool. I get really surprised with clients who have, they've got done crash diets before and they come over and we'll be kind of losing weight on way more calories. They'll be kind of really, really happy with how they're feeling and stuff. But then they'll say, oh, I wish I could have weight, lost weight quicker. And they're like losing at that, this 1%. And it's so frustrating because it is ingrained. Like people see these mm. ten pound transformations in like two weeks. And it's like it's just it's not good for the body. You won't be able to keep that up. You'll put it back on. Yeah. Um, so these the sustainable way is never sexy. It will never. It's sell. never. Yeah. It's like I was trying to sell this for for a long time. Trying to sell this uh, this sustainable lifestyle. You can lose. You can know you could lose fifty pound and then keep it off and all this. And people weren't listening because they were like, "What?" And do it slowly. And I'm like, yeah, but you can keep it off. And you weren't listening. So like we, we take people through like a 12-week plan now and it, it helps them understand that, okay, yeah. in 12 weeks, we're going to get this result. And it's 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 quite quite sexy numbers, but it's achievable at the same time. It's it's quite, quite an, it's very interesting industry. But this, um, this, <laughs> this fitness, is, it fascinates me um, how distorted it is. Um, so did you have... Did you visualize being a bodybuilder? Did you think like, did you imagine it when you were back there? Because it's a big, I'm talking about, I'm using bodybuilding because obviously a lot of people won't be listening to this for bodybuilding, but I'm using it as a goal because we've both done that. So when I say the word bodybuilder, I mean a huge goal. I call it a BFG, a big fucking goal. <laughs> um, so did you visualize that? Did you, did you envision it? How did you? get a go about going from where you were to the bodybuilding stage i think i really didn't <laughs> i didn't visualize it at all i really didn't even know what to expect what it would be like and i think that almost helped me because i was very much focused on just doing what i needed to do each day mm. so i had a coach for that show and i was just following everything as i could to the t and reporting into him and just letting progress just kind of come to me um now of course I do more so visualize it and I kind of see where I think I'm going to be. But because I'd never been there, mm, it's, it's not something I really focus too much on. I really try to nail the processes, which, yeah, like I said, I think we both agree the processes are what get you to the goal. If you can focus on nailing those every single day continually, you'll get there. There will be times at which I was kind of like, nothing's moving, I'm not going in the right direction at this like period of time. But I think, uh, again, and this is why online coaching and coaching in general is successful because you can have someone to be accountable to. You can have someone to kind of lean on. It's a 24-7 thing, isn't it, rather than that one hour in a gym with a, with yeah. a PT. Yeah. That's to, the power of the online coaching. So what, what you've just said there is like almost like a, an evolution of personal development. So you've uh, we're talking about personal development in, in this a lot, and visualization is a big part of um like becoming more self-aware and better at personal development so i was very similar so 2012 when i did the bodybuilding competition which we're translating here to being a big goal i just did the same thing where it was like get ready get ready get ready get ready and just try to do the daily processes and then 2014 when i was getting ready i had six months to get ready and i was very visualizing the end result and very visualizing the day the actual what happens on that day how does it feel how does it look i almost like breathed that goal so i was like so people listening you can do this with yourself you can you can think about like a, a goal or a, and visualize it and actual feel it see it imagine it like 
it's almost you can touch it. It might mean closing your eyes. It might mean spending a, a few minutes thinking about it. But don't think about the journey just now. Just think about like this, this, this end goal. So that's kind of like the beginning of visualization. So then we're talking about a day here for me and for you. So it's this day that we're going to look at. And then how does it feel? How does it look? Then we got to go, right, okay, so we're there in our mind. We can see it. We're walking out on stage or maybe the goal is um, something completely different, but it's a one-day thing. So then we got to work backwards. So then we go back to the beginning, like where we are now and kind of reverse engineer where we are. So, okay, so I'm here now and I want to get to that huge goal over there. So you've got to, go, you've got to ask yourself several questions, haven't you? Like, how do I get to that goal? Uh, what do I need to learn? What do I need to do? What connections do I need to make if it's you know business orientated? Because I know there's a lot of people listening to do with business here. So when you put all that together, then you brainstorm that and go, right, what do I actually need? And then you basically break them down and get them done, which is very similar to our goals, which is in six months, I need to do this. Or let's say someone wants to open a gym, for example. They might go, right, so I want to open a gym because it's obviously we're talking about the fitness industry. I want to open a gym and then you look at it and go, oh my God, in how am I going to do that? And I, you can visualize it and you can see it and then go, what do I need to learn? And do all them steps and go back and then go, okay, so for example, you might need to spend five years working towards that goal because it's such a huge goal. Every day becomes happy because you've got this massive goal that you're working towards and then the daily processes just become part of the daily routine. So you might need to learn personal development. You might need to learn how to manage staff for this goal. You might need to like do a degree in business. You might need to learn marketing, finances, cash flow, management, health and safety regulations, and all this like like stuff that comes with like owning a gym or opening a gym, for example. So then you have to work backwards again, get them done, and then of course that big long term goal is just going to keep you happy in the long run. But then we've got to remember that the goal is just a goal. So it'd be nice to hear how you felt after after your last bodybuilding competition. How did you feel a week or so after? Yeah, so I, I think I, I, just to give an easy example to people for that, it's like if you want to be a doctor work back, and you're at like yeah. preschool, you need to work backwards, look at all the steps you need to take to become a doctor. But anyway, um, after the show, it's, it's weird because... Right? I think a lot of my thoughts and perceptions were skewed by how I was expecting to feel. So you hear a lot of people who are like, oh, they're post-contest blues. They don't know what they're going to do. Um, they kind of either people binge or they kind of, they find the reverse diet like impossible, uh, which is prolific at that time. For me, I felt kind of it, in a bad way, I think, a sense of relief mm. and accomplishment um, at the same time. So I, I mean, I felt the day after I felt very lost. Um, I was just kind of like, what is even going on? I had, I didn't track macros that day. I didn't track my nutrition. <laughs> lost, I just, yeah. yeah. I just felt completely lost. It's not like I, I didn't binge. I didn't kind of break down. I didn't do anything else. I just spent the day with my girlfriend and kind of felt like a normal human being for a period of time, um, for that day. And then it was kind of, I got back into, and I'm quite a regimented person anyway. So back into the kind of the reverse diet at the time which is what I was doing and just went and followed the processes again mm. and I, I, I am very process orientated it's just kind of in my nature to follow routine and pattern and I just got back into that and I think that actually really helped me because mm. I think a lot of people kind of focus a lot on having achieved that goal and then they kind of like well what next what am I doing now and then they, they kind of then get depressed or yeah. kind of upset and that sort of thing or if you can relate it to like people go on holiday, they have post holiday blues. Yeah. A good way around that is just planning another holiday and then yeah. you've got that to look forward to. So I think for me, I just kind of planned my off season. I, I thought, oh, I'm going to go into powerlifting. That can be my next goal. Um, and that gave me kind of another vision to what I can work and work towards and achieve. Um, because you do need that focus, especially in a bodybuilding show where you're kind of going from your peak physique and then you're, you're kind of looking a bit crappy for a mm. couple of weeks after the show because you're, you're not looking, you're not feeling particularly great. You are adding body fat purposely to get healthier. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of quite hard to leave that. So I think having the goal of like strength really helped me um, to kind of get over 
So it was basically was setting fun. setting new goals is the is, yeah. the is was the way out of finishing one goal and getting to the next goal. I don't know if I've said this on the podcast once before, but it's a story I tell quite regularly. Is the um, the swimming story? So you've just related to a holiday there, which is great because it works. It fits in quite well. So it's the story of like when you go on holiday and just one of them small islands just out, just slightly far enough away that you can swim to. Or maybe it's a boat, boat just sitting there. So you're lying on a beach and you go, right, I'm going to go and swim over to that island now or the boat. And then you swim over to it. So that's your mini goal. So as you're swimming towards that, that um, boat or the little island, then if you stop and completely go stiff and stop swimming, that's like you sinking. So then you're going to sink into like a depressive state or not being happy. This is how it, how it relates to life. But then if you just kind of tread water or just keep going swim, swimming towards that goal at a steady pace, you're going to get there. But then if you go too fast, you might run out of breath and the same thing will happen. So it's like kind of relates to life. But then, of course, when you get to the island or the boat when you're on holiday or whatever it is, you've got to realise it's just an island or it's just a boat. And that's how it relates to the goals. And it's just a boat when you get there or it's just a goal. But then you've got to fit and it's just so you've got to then do another, have another goal. Which might be swimming back to the beach to then go out in the night time, which is your next goal on holiday. But it might be in life where you relate it to setting your goals up one after each other and have multiple visions. Uh, sorry, multiple visualizations of all your goals that you're going to do for the next like 10, like 20, 20 years. You know, if you've got all them goals in place, it helps us keep a lot happier compared to like just wandering around life with minimal goals. Um, and then, of course, if you can go even further and get them them goals being around your passion, you're definitely going to be a lot happier. Um, yeah, I think actually related to that, amongst the powerlifting, also had business. Yeah. So I very much then started focusing on the business and that yeah. kind of was my goal to develop the brand. And kind of I had much more energy to put into that because I guess like this can relate to a lot of goals, but bodybuilding specifically is like an all encompassing thing. You put yeah. everything into it when you get down to those last few weeks, like months or even. And so business kind of takes a bit of a backseat. So yeah, I've managed to put a lot more time into developing that. Definitely. Yeah. So it's been, um, it's been an awesome, an awesome chat. We can, um, hopefully, suggest, hopefully some of the people listening have, have taken something away from it. Steve gave some great insights. Um, I hope some of my little stories have helped a couple of people. Um, and one thing I do want to say is thanks for everybody that's already been sharing the podcast. There's, there's only a few that's gone out so far. If you can continue to do that, that's absolutely awesome. Um, we obviously, both of us and Steve's podcast, we need people to share it so people can get the content. Because of course, these are free. We just do these to help each, help people. So thanks for the uh, thanks for your time. I appreciate you coming on the podcast. It's uh, It's an honor. And um, I'd hope to speak to you sometime in the, in the future, and we'll uh, hopefully compete together in um, the end of the year. Yeah, you know, thank you for having me on. Uh, pleasure, and hopefully, people got something away from the story, and uh, yeah, can take something away. And for sure, we'll speak. Good. Okay. Take care. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed listening. Cheers, guys.